So today, what we're going to look at is an alternative way to get traffic that I think actually beats SEO every single time. And by the end of this video, you'll learn exactly how to never worry about SEO traffic again, never worry about Google updates again. You're basically going to build an invincible update proof SEO asset that still drives traffic, still drives money from SEO. But based on what's working for me, you don't need to worry about, okay, does an update hit my site? Does it not? What can I do instead? And you don't need to worry anymore about, okay, like I'm not making money since the last update, right? Because that would be absolutely brutal. Instead, I'm going to show you an alternative way to make sure that you get traffic that's update proof. And this is just going to be focusing on one single channel. Now, if you want training for other traffic diversification methods, check out the link in the comments and description to my free SEO course. And that comes with loads of traffic diversification methods. So at this point, you're probably like, can you just get on with it, Julian Goldie? And can you get straight into it? So I'm going to share my screen. I'll show you exactly what I mean and what I'm talking about and how all of this works. So let me share my screen right here. And our Andrew says, please play the video. So I'm glad that we got straight into there. I did, sorry about that. I had the live waiting in the, the waiting list for a little bit. So what you can see right here is this is my email list workflow, right? And you can see I've got 32,000 people waiting for the next step. And additionally, if we scroll all the way up here, you can see a long email workflow. Now, what I would say at this point in time is that out of everything that I do, and I have like over 100 sites, I have an agency with 50 people, I have a YouTube channel, I have all sorts of stuff going on. But what I can say is that out of everything, writing an email every single day is probably one of the highest leverage things I can do, right? Because I know it's going to guarantee me some sort of traffic, potentially some leads, some sales calls, etc. And if you follow the methods I'm about to show you, then you can replicate the same thing. By the way, if you're watching this and enjoying it, please smash a like on this. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask them as we go along. Always happy to help. And, you know, don't be shy here. So we're going to get straight into it. And what I've already talked about previously on my YouTube channel is how to build funnels that actually create an email list, right? So if you're like, okay, Julian Goldie, that's great for you. You've got 50,000 email opt-ins, but I've only got 10 or I don't even have an email list at all. Well, then I would highly recommend that you start with this video right here. And if you want the SAP for that, it's inside my free SEO course. But basically that will teach you exactly how to create an email opt-in list like mine that gets a 56% opt-in rate. So the 56% of the traffic that comes to that particular page actually converts into traffic. And Facebook user says, have you kept playing with mate.com? You introduced me to it and it was amazing. Yeah, I love mate.com. By the way, we can cover that in a second, actually. I'm just going to show you the main training for this video and then we'll we'll cover this video on mate.com and some of the automations that I play around with in a second. But yeah, so I'm going to share my stats view right here. And basically, this is Go High Level. So Go High Level is my favorite app. And I think if you're running a website, you're running a business and you want to generate more leads, more sales, more email opt-ins, more info product sales, more coaching. If you want to build up an email list, if you want to create funnels in like a few minutes, then it's one of the best platforms I've ever used. It just makes everything easy. And what you can see here is that we are getting anywhere between like a 15 to 20% open rate, right? So you can see these emails right here got a 15% open rate with a 1.1% click-through rate. 2% bounce rate, but this is on like 50,000 people. So, you know, it, we're, we're going to get a few bounces here and there. And then you can see this open rate, it has a 20% open rate, 1.8% click-through rate, which is pretty awesome. And basically what I can do every single day is with this funnel, I can send an email, get the funnel to wait one day, then send another email, and it just continues over and over again. If people enter the workflow later, then they'll start from day one. If people are, you know, in the email funnel for days and days or months and months, then they'll be down here. And this is a new workflow that I worked on recently, but it's getting me better results than ever. And Simo says, life is like that, bro. Anything anymore, don't want to treat them good. Bad boys is always the loved ones. Thank you. And Ted says, I can't find the like button. Appreciate you smashing the like on that. That's very kind. All right, so let me, I'm going to open up this particular email copy right here. And this is basically like a template I think that anyone can use. And I'll show you how to automate a lot of this with AI as well in a second. But what you can see here is uh, we start a new email action and you can use whatever you want, right? It doesn't have to be Go High Level. Go High Level is quite expensive for a lot of people. So if you prefer to use a free email 
uh, service or software or SaaS or whatever, then you can use something like MailerLite. MailerLite is completely free. I think MailChimp might have something as well, but they're a bit more strict on what you can and can't do. But here's an example of an email that we would send daily to get more views, to get more leads, etc. And some of you probably watching this have received these emails as well. So that's why I want to show you that it actually works. So if you look at this particular email that was sent here, we start with a hook. So we're like, discover the free keyword research techniques to turn the tables on paid tools, right? So it's like, oh, what is this? And then people will see the second line and it actually links to one of my YouTube videos, as you can see right here. So it says, so the text, the anchor text basically is full tutorial here. And then it links to my YouTube video. And then it's got another hook, which is like, imagine being in the competition without spending a dime because this is a free keyword research tutorial. Links to my YouTube tutorial as well. So usually when you're writing an email, and I just want to talk you through the basics. Some people already know this, but for those who don't, you basically want a hook, then a link straight off the bat. Most people won't read the whole email. They just want to click somewhere. Then it's going to tell them to, you know, why this is useful. And then additionally as well, what we always do is we have this option to book in a free SEO strategy session right here. And then it just signs off with my name, my signature and a unsubscribe link right there, right? Always include an unsubscribe, absolutely crucial. But yeah, basically this is how we're getting traffic even after the updates. And what I can tell you now is even after our agency site got de-indexed, we actually got, we actually tripled our sales in week on week after that actually happened, right? So we tripled our sales, we tripled the number of sales calls that we got because we had a great email list, because we're already diversifying our traffic. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to diversify your traffic, check out my free SEO course, but basically emails are one of the best ways to diversify your traffic and become update proof. And then what you would do every single day is just write a new email like this. You could easily get someone else to do it, but for me, I think it's, if, if you can increase your open rates by say, 20 or 30 or 50% by actually doing it yourself. And you're speaking to thousands of people in one single email. Plus it only takes you like 20 or 30 minutes to write that email maximum. Then actually it's probably the highest leverage thing you can do. It's going to generate more money for you and you might as well do it yourself. So Facebook user says that's not a cold email. Absolutely not. This is a warm email list, right? So what we do from SEO, bear in mind, I have a lot of sites in the SEO niche actually in the background that are performing really well. And I, I can't show it on YouTube, obviously, because of what happened. But if you want to get the, the private case studies, you can get that from my WhatsApp group, link in the comments and description. But essentially, what we do is we just generate more and more traffic to our email list, to our sales call funnels, etc. using SEO, using YouTube SEO as well, using Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook groups. And then we build up this email list, which then means whatever happens, even if you had 100 sites that get de-indexed or your YouTube goes down or whatever, it doesn't matter because you've got a big email list that you can build a relationship and nurture into buying something. Now, when you're writing these emails, the other th important thing here is the subject line, right? So you can see this got a 20% open rate right here. And what you can see with this particular subject line is it's very clickbait, right? So who doesn't want a free AI SEO keyword research blueprint? Now, what I typically do is I have two ways of writing the email subject line. So number one, I'll just use like the clickbait title from my videos. You can see right here because they're quite interesting. For example, like how to turn SEO traffic into millions, right? That's a good subject line for an email too. But the other thing that I do, and I'll show you another example right here, is I will just create something very short that creates curiosity, makes people want to open it because they're like, how, how do you do that? Right? So for example, hundred X your SEO traffic right there. And then it links them to a tool that I actually used to write these emails. So I'll come on to that in a second as well. So I'm just going to mute this site right here. And then I'll show you how I write these emails with AI as well. So I'm going to open up two different custom GPTs. One of them is my hundred X content machine. You might've seen that before. And the other one, is my sales copywriting machine, right? Now you can get access to both of these links in the comments to the free course. It has links to both of these GPT. Some of you will have them already. And what I usually do is I'll take a blog post or I'll take a YouTube video transcript like this one, for example, let's open this up. We'll scroll down to the transcript of my video. And again, if you don't create videos, you can just use your blog posts. You can even just give it an idea and then plug this into a custom GPT like this one. And you just say something like, 
do your magic on this, mate, right? And then you paste that in there, you paste that in there, and you're good to go. Now, whilst we're waiting for that to generate, let me answer a couple more questions here. So Income2 says, do we need to send a daily email? I would highly recommend sending daily emails if you can, because the, the more you can nurture and give value to your email list, the more likely they are to reciprocate and buy something from you. Right. And so if you can serve them in a better way by creating more value daily rather than weekly or something like that, I mean, I know some people build an email list and never even contact them, then the more likely your email list is to convert into sales. So yeah, I would highly recommend daily emails. And like I'm showing you, it's quite easy to actually write an email using these custom GPTs and then pump them out daily. And bear in mind, this only takes like 10 or 20 minutes. And even if you don't have 10 or 20 minutes spare, then what you can do is just hire someone on Upwork to, to actually write the emails for you. But either way, you're building an update proof asset, which means you never have to worry about SEO again. And it means that you can kind of sleep easy at night because you know you're going to make money whenever happens. So I've shown you some of my best converting email templates. I've shown you exactly what I do in terms of the strategy for my email posts. We're going to click on continue generating right there to just keep getting the content. And I'm going to show you how I put an actual email together as well. So what I can do for this particular email, right? I can just take the video title like so. Kung Tran says, thank you for the knowledge. Happy Dell. Thanks for watching. And then I would just put something clickbait in the title like how to rank number one with backlinks, something like that. That could be the subject line. And then in the actual email copy, you would want to have some sort of viral hook. So let me find some examples of that, All right? So if we scroll up right here, this tool, the sales copyright machine actually writes them for you. So for example, the first line, and you would manually edit this before you actually send it, but you want to hook people in, right? So how do you do that? You can be like, well, ever wondered how the pros build backlinks so quickly? Watch me secure a powerful backlink live. And in this particular line, you would actually link to whatever piece of content you're trying to link to. So in this case, it would actually be the YouTube video URL. And then from there, you would say you, you've got the foreshadowing. And I'll explain this viral hook in a second, but you'd say something like, I'll reveal the app exact steps and even show you the secret outreach template I use. Now, what I like to do in my emails is just keep the copy really short, right? So like maximum sort of 10 words on each line, but the less, the better. And then finally, you can have the last line, which is something like this. Stick around to see if I can land a backlink live. Will it succeed or fail? Watch here. Right. And then in this line right here and this line right here, I would link to the YouTube video to generate more traffic to that. And then that generates more traffic to my fun funnels as a result. And then I have this canned response at the end of each email that says like, PS, want a free SEO acceleration session? Book a call here. It's got a link to my sales funnel plus a UTM to track if that lead actually converted. Right. This is very important in terms of UTMs. Now, the beautiful thing about go high level is that you can actually track where people come from, right? So you, if you get a sales call or a sale or an info product sale, whatever you're selling on your website, if you get that on go high level and you track it, then you can actually track where, which platform and which campaign and even which email that particular sale came from. So you can attribute everything and figure out what's working, what's not, so you can do more of what's working and stop wasting your time on what doesn't. Facebook user says, keep the copy short. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And then free media tool says, bro, I again saw a massive traffic drop from 5th of April, especially on 10th of April. You also saw core update is not complete. Yeah. So there's actually been a lot of up. Well, number one core update is still rolling out, right? From last time I checked, let me have a double check here, right? I'm going to, I'm going to open this up right here. Let's just double check. Is, is the core update still rolling out? Last time I checked it, I think I checked it yesterday. It was still rolling out, which is crazy. So let me double check that page. It's been a really long one and quite a messy one as well. So yeah, you can see since the 5th of March, the core update is still rolling out. So they're still making some big changes, I can imagine. There's also been some reversals, so I wouldn't do anything crazy just yet. But yeah, 
a lot of, a lot of people got hit. I was at the SEO Mastery Summit this week, and the one thing I noticed was that a lot of people doing niche and affiliate sites got hit massively. But a lot of the people who are actually running real businesses like agencies, services, freelancers, e-com sites especially, you know, we've all seen the case study of like Catster and Dogster.com. They're performing really well after the core update. So I wouldn't do anything drastic just yet. I would wait for the update to roll out and then just go from there. But bear in mind, it's a long-term play, right? It's going to take patience to actually recover from that. Facebook user says, are those only available with a paid chat GPT subscription? They are, but what you can actually do, in fact, I'll do this for you right now. I'm going to edit this GPT. I'm going to give you the custom instructions. So even if you don't have the paid version of chat GPT, I'm going to give you the custom instructions. I will include that inside the video notes today. So if you want the instructions, you'll get it inside my free course. I'll show you how in a second, but yeah, we'll put that right there for the tool. So even if you don't have the paid version, you can do it for free. There you go. Free Media Tool says, bro, one suggestion. I have an e-commerce store where I sell source code and plugins. What price is good so that sales can be more? Is $60 good or should I decrease it? I mean, honestly, I don't know what product you sell. So it would be like me sticking my finger in the air. But what I would recommend is you just figure out the profits and reverse engineer from there, right? So for example, if you're selling a service, I run an agency. I've always looked at, okay, how can I increase the profit margins? And what sort of price do I need to sell this at to make a realistic profit margin, right? I think most people think in terms of revenue, not profit, which is a bit of a waste of time. But if you think in terms of profit and you reverse engineer the numbers from there, you just go, right, how much am I buying this for? How much am I paying for all the labor? What are my, for example, overheads? And then how can I make a profit margin based on that? And then just go from there. The other thing to increase your profit margins when it comes to e-commerce pricing is just add some upsells in the cart, right? Add multiple upsells in the car. So for example, if you're selling like, I don't know, like if you look at an example like McDonald's, they don't just sell burgers. They'll say, do you want fries or do you want a drink with that? That will increase the LTV of each customer, which means you make more money. Therefore, your profit margins are going to be higher. Therefore, your pricing across the board works out better. Mike says, dude, new Chrome available like every week now. Sorry, just saw your notification. I have a linger in there too. I think you mean about the Chrome updates maybe, but yeah, I've seen a lot of Chrome updates like popping up recently and it's absolutely crazy. Facebook user says, I have both courses. They're amazing. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for watching and I'm glad they helped you. And D Cooper says, I'm using one signal to look at the exits and then auto send a notification with offers based on the page they visited and clicked off of. Does your funnel account for the blog slash articles? This is super smart. Like if you're, if you're segmenting your audience based on the actions that they have on your website, you know, for example, like someone puts something into the cart and then doesn't check out, that's, that's, you know, that's a great way to just personalize the email funnel to get more conversions. We do it for the same for our agency, right? And I'm just using my agency site as an example, simply because it's so open and transparent to everyone. And everyone watching this has probably come across my SEO agency, but Essentially, when it comes to our SEO agency, if someone opts in for the free course, then they'll get put into a funnel which recommends them a $7 book, right? Uh, sorry, $7 link building course. And then from there, if they buy that, they'll be recommended a $56 info product upsell, right? And then from there, the SEO mastermind, the link building agency, in each stage, we're sending people to buy more stuff from us. But additionally, we're trying to solve the next problem in the chain, right? So for example, if someone goes on the e-com store and they buy, say, spiritual jewelry, well, maybe they want like a course on chakras or something like that, or yoga, I don't know. But you can see how the Ascension Funnel works for pretty much every single industry. And then Free Media Tool says, do PayPal still number one payment gateway to accept international payments worldwide. Yeah, for us personally, we use Stripe and PayPal. For our agency, we also accept payments via, well, sometimes even crypto, but also we accept payments via bank transfer, etc. But yeah, PayPal and Stripe. I can tell you now though, actually, I've run a business without PayPal before and it didn't seem to negatively impact sales, right? So especially if you're selling like one-to-one, -one, Stripe is, is the best way to collect payments in my personal opinion. And then PayPal is very good. 
crypto some people want to pay in crypto particularly online entrepreneurs and then additionally accepting payments by bank transfer is rare but some people still want to do it so yeah so that's pretty much it i'm gonna just present my screen again and we'll recap on everything that we've done so far So we have talked about Go High Level and how to build email workflows right there. Otherwise, you can use MailerLite, which is free. We've talked about how I write the emails and actually automate them with custom GPTs. I'm actually going to include the link to my custom GPTs inside the SAP right there. And we'll just grab the one for the 100x content machine as well. So we'll plug that right there into the SAP. We've talked about segmentation and triggers. So for example, if someone opts in for my SEO course, then they'll get upsold the link building course for like $7. We've talked about examples of top emails and templates. So I'm actually gonna plug that into the SAP right here as well. So if we take this as an example, this was a 20% open rate, which is, I think, a pretty reasonable benchmark to aim for. And then if you want to see an example of the sales copy within the email, you can get that right there, right? So if you want to get like a template of what's working for me, and I'll just take the best performing ones. Let me have a look down the list, see what else got a 20% opt-in right there. So this one is, well, where is it? There, yeah, this one got a 20% as well. So we'll plug that in. And I'll give you the example subject line. Subject lines like this will change everything, basically work in every single niche you can imagine, right? So if you want to get traffic in, say, I don't know, spiritual jewelry or SEO, whatever, every single industry can use this subject line. This will change everything. And as you can see, it doesn't get old. 20% open rate, right? It just creates a lot of curiosity, and that's why people click on it. And by the way, if you have any more questions, feel free to post them. If you're enjoying this, please smash a like on the video. It just helps us reach more people and help more people for free. So we've talked about two of my best performing emails in the funnel, and I've shown you proof that they work. And we've also tested this on 32,000 people, so we know it actually works. And one other thing I was going to mention as well, I posted this on Twitter, is we've got... I've been cracking the code on Facebook ads recently, so I've been testing it. We're getting really good results with it. Just started it again a couple of days ago, but so far I'm pretty impressed. Like it's easier than I imagined. So if you want to learn about Facebook ads and you want to talk more about traffic diversification, well, just let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to, to sort of create a free training on Facebook ads and exactly what's working for us right now. You know that everything that I show, I actually test, I show you proof with actual over the shoulder tutorials just like this one so yeah and um, just in case you were interested i'll show you some of the other training that we're releasing extender says love you brother love you too and we're gonna get straight into the course right here so this is a free course that i give away links in the comments and description so if we scroll down right here to this particular free course you'll see there's a SAP right here on how to build funnels that actually convert traffic into emails. Because let's be honest, if that update comes again, you know, the probably one of the most brutal ones that I've seen in years. Well, if that update comes again this year, and I think Google are going to have to release more updates based on what I can see in the SERPs and their market share as well, then if your traffic gets wiped out, all the hard work that you've put into your site is lost. But if you collect email opt ins from your website, then you're compounding on all the work you do. It doesn't matter if you lose all your SEO traffic because you've still got an email list that's going to generate sales for you. So the other ways that we can diversify our traffic are like Facebook groups, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and these are all video tutorials that you can see right here, along with eight ways to get more free traffic based on what's working for me. So if you want to get all of this, links in the comments and description. And if you want to get access to this SAP right here, I'm going to call this email SAP. We'll share that link and then I'm going to plug it inside my free SEO course just to keep everything neat and organized. So I'll put email right there. Hit save. Open up. And you can get free instant access to that. Link is in the comments and description. 
And once it's available to download, I'll put the live video tutorial in there too. So yeah, let me know if you want that Facebook ads training and I'm just going to go through any other FAQs. So if you've got FAQs right now, feel free to post them in the chat and I'll answer them directly on the call. So Free Media Tools also says lots of good questions coming from Free Media. It says, do all marketing emails that we send using some kind of automated software land in the spam folder of Gmail and how to prevent it? Any software suggestion? So number one, when it comes to actually sending the emails, what I use is Mailgun with a dedicated server, I think it's got, it's some sort of premium package to make sure the email deliverability is really good. And then that plugs directly into Go High Level. So that works really well for email deliverability. Additionally, and it's, this is just kind of like cold email as well, for my website, me at juliangoldie.com, that's my email address, for that particular email, I have DKIM set up, DMARC, SPF encryption, and these are all the signals to say this is a real person from, uh, someone people can trust, etc., and then that improves deliverability as well. That's what works really well for cold email and also inbound email too. And then additionally, when you're actually writing the emails, what you'll see is that I'm quite sparing with the amount of formatting I insert. Now, if I insert loads of formatting, loads of images, pictures, etc., typically what's going to happen is that will land in the promotion section of Gmail, right? And it'll be filtered out and most people won't see it. Whereas if you write a plain text email with just two or three links maximum, then actually that's got a much higher chance of actually landing in someone's main email folder, which means that the open rates and the click-through rates and the results you get from email are going to be much higher. I'll put that inside the notes of the email SAP just so you can recap on that. But yeah, like I said, for email deliverability, you want to make sure you've got SPF, DMARC, DKIM, keep it plain text, two to three links inside the content. And a big part of this, you know, the 80, 20 of results with email is typically the subject line. And that doesn't take long to write, but it makes a big difference because if you have a 20% open rate and you have an 18% open rate, that doesn't sound like a big difference in terms of percentages. But actually, if you've got 30,000 people watching or reading your emails, then that's a 10% increase in the amount of revenue, sales, et cetera, leads that you get from that email. So it makes a big difference. It's quite a high leverage tweak that you can actually make. In the meantime, just while we're running through this, I'm going to answer some of the questions I got my FAQs recently. But if you do have more questions, if anyone's watching this and they're like, oh, I'm a bit stuck on something in SEO, just feel free to post them inside the comments. And if you're enjoying this, then just smash a like on it as well. So let me run through some of the top comments recently and I'll share my screen. Armando says, I heard that Flipboard is the new hope for bloggers. I haven't actually tried it, but I've heard more and more about Flipboard. It's quite interesting to see what's trending after the Google Core update, right? So if you look at the Google Core update, after that, I've seen Facebook marketing trending, Tumblr is coming back. Like a lot of people are talking about Tumblr. Bing SEO is massive. Like I tweeted about Bing SEO jokingly yesterday saying that I could rank for my own name after the, the clapping, which you can see right here. At least you're just a one-liner with a screenshot. You see you got like 5,000 views in what, like 15 hours, something like that. So I think Bing SEO and Flipboard are, are really trending right now along with Facebook marketing. So I might do a experiment on that in the future. It'd be quite interesting to see what results we can get from it as well. D Cooper says, FMT, send yourself the same email you planned to send with Spam Assassin, activate it on your own account, and you will know in advance if it trips the spam filter. Really good tip there. I haven't actually tried that, but let's check out Spam Assassin. That's a smart way to do it, though. Just check if your content is actually going to land and get delivered before you actually send it. Is that the right one? Let's double check. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like you can check it out right there. Spamassassin.apache.org. I think that's the right one. Looks interesting. I might have to check that out. Maybe do an experiment in the future. So let's run through some of the other comments that we've got right here. So someone commented white hat SEO on my link building masterclass with James Dooley and Carl Hudson. Definitely. I think a lot of the content that we publish now is, is way cleaner than it used to be, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Because 
for example, a lot of people watching this, and even if I say it's an, an experiment, I think I have to lead by example because sometimes people will copy directly what I do, even when I say don't do this or don't try this or this is an experiment, etc. So a lot of the content that we're producing these days is cleaner, but it still works, and you can see that with the emails that we're showing today. And Amin says, I used to use Facebook ads for my IPTV business, but I got no good clients from there. Everyone is just wasting time and requesting a free trial and not orders after the trial. Do you have any suggestions yet? Yeah. I'm going to run through some suggestions right now. So when it comes to Facebook ads, right? And I'll do a full training on this in the future. So I don't want to give away everything today. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see more of that. But basically, when it comes to Facebook ads, you want to filter hard, right? What do I mean by that? Well, for example, if you go on my strategy session, this is where we send most of our traffic, right? We click on book a call right here. Number one, we have quite a long application form to filter out the time wasters, right? So typically the shorter your application form before someone signs up or buys something or tries to book in a call, etc. Well, the shorter that is, the more the, the less committed people are to actually booking in a call with you, right? So if you create a long application form, you'll get less conversions, less people booking in, it'll be more expensive per call, but the people that actually jump on the call will be more committed because they've spent all that time filling in the application form. I've seen some direct response marketers who have actually created application forms that take like 10 minutes to do. And it's quite high risk when it comes to direct response. But the beauty of that is that it filters out anyone who's going to be like, oh, can't be bothered to fill that in because I don't really care about what I'm trying to sign up for. Additionally, what you'll see here is that we pre-qualify people in terms of what website they have, right? So typically before someone jumps on the call with us, we'll check out their website and actually make sure that it's a real website and not just like a fake one where people aren't really serious about their business. Final thing that I would say is you can set up surveys and this is all within Go High Level as well, but you can set up these surveys where people can choose their budget. And the thing is, if people don't have the right budget for us to help them, then they're going to get redirected to a waiting list. And by the way, if you do want a free SEO strategy session, feel free to book that. Link's in the comments and description. But basically what you see right here is that people get redirected to a waiting list if they don't have the budget to invest to get good results for our SEO agency. And I'm just being 100% transparent with everyone watching that. But this is basically how we do it to filter out people who are not the right fit, who are not the right quality in terms of what we need to invest to make sure they get good results. So long application form, filter people out automatically. And what else would I say? Also have make sure you have a show up funnel, right? So in terms of an email funnel, when people sign up for a strategy session with us, they'll also receive an email funnel that nurtures them daily into making sure they show up for the call because you really want to make sure they're committed to growing their business before they jump on that call with you because every call that you have actually costs you money in terms of time in terms of resources in terms of your staff etc so those three things should help a lot and then the other thing that i would say is it's all about setting expectations before the call right and so Typically, what we found when we first set up a strategy session funnel like this is that uh, the leads would show up. Oh, sorry. No, quite often the leads were booking a call, but they wouldn't show up, right? And again, that comes down to low quality leads. Now, why is that? It's because they didn't have any reason to show up. We didn't sell them enough on the actual course. You want to make sure there's a reason to show up. And I'll show how to do that in a future Facebook ads training. If people want to see it, just let me know in the comments in the description. But yeah, that's essentially how it works. Next up, Ted asks, do you use Spark Toro for audience research? I actually don't. I mean, I can set up surveys within Go High Level. That's quite easy to do. So I can set up polls and send those out to people. But the best way to get research, and I'll show you how we do this on our community on YouTube. Let me pull this up right here. If we go to community tab over here, what we quite often do is we run these polls. Right. So you can see this poll right here, it got 952 votes right there. And that helps me understand, okay, where are people at with topical maps or keyword research? How optimistic or pessimistic do people feel about SEO over the next 10 years? How's the Google update going so far for people? Right. And that's probably one of the best ways to really figure out, okay, what do your audience want? The other thing that I would recommend when it comes to understanding your niche and your industry and doing audience research 
is you can look up, I'm going to put in like, I don't know, search engine optimization into YouTube. I think YouTube is one of the best places to start simply because it's a great way to see what's trending. But if we sort by view count, and then we also sort by published this month, we can see what's trending right now. So you can see, for example, Chris Palmer's video on Google, my business profile optimization is performing pretty well right there. And if we scroll down, we can see more videos that are performing really well as well. So you can see, for example, this course right here is doing well, meta tags, etc., and just get a feel for what people are interested in right now. So you can see as well, Lily Ray, I know that her video with Authority Hacker performed really well this week. And that's because she's talking about, you know, the mess of the core, Google Core updates and how people can fix it, etc., and providing some good insights on that, right? Uh, the same with this video right here from Niche Pursuits, released just 10 hours ago. It's already got nearly 900 views. That just helps me figure out, okay, what are people interested in? So they're interested in learning about the future of search. They're interested in learning about Google Core updates, etc., And that's great for audience research too. What I typically like to do with all of my videos, and you'll see this over time when I'm publishing, is I try and gather the sentiment from the audience in terms of what they're looking for, right? So in terms of re audience research, I can easily see what people are interested in and what they're not interested in. So you can see human SEO, nobody cares. Nobody is interested in that. In fact, I don't know if we're even going to do a case study on that because you know, people vote with their views. And you can see right here, that's probably one of our worst performing videos for ages. Whereas for example, SEO is dead is a topic that a lot of people are very interested in right now. It's trending and therefore we'll do more videos on like why SEO is dead or what you can do instead. For example, like this video on traffic diversification or funnels, etc. EAT is another trending one. And you just, you get a feel for the audience and what they're looking for. D Cooper says the half has the worst, no comment. And a A1 Inventor says, hi boss, why Google destroyed niche sites? Is it best to start niche website again in 2024 or multi niche websites? Someone actually DM me this this morning. I'm gonna pull up exactly what I sent to them inside, inside the, uh, the notes right here. I'm gonna have to be careful what I say right now, but yeah. All right, this should be okay. Right, so when it comes to niche sites, this is a, a message that I sent to someone on Facebook this morning. Honestly, I think like services, agency, and econ is perfect for SEO, right? Because the thing is niche sites, they're not really a real business. And some of them are still performing well, but typically what we've seen after the Google Core update is uh, Google smashed up niche sites, affiliate sites, etc. But e-com sites, agency sites, et cetera, have done really well because they're real businesses. So services, agency, e-com, that's the way to go, I think. Just build a real business, a real brand. That's what Google wants to see, and that's what builds authority and trust, right? And then keep diversifying your traffic as well. So, for example, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook groups, et cetera. And I think it's only going to get tougher for niche sites and affiliate sites. But overall, e-com and agencies, they're the ones who are winning right now. Now, if you speak to someone like Gail Breton from Authority Hacker, he'll actually tell you that, you know, based on our interview, he'd tell you that actually SEO for niche sites is still working. But the main thing is that you've got to do it properly, right? So, for example, if you've got a site doing reviews on products, well, then you would actually buy the products yourself. You create some interesting content around that. You probably do some YouTube videos as well as some actual content on your website in terms of blog articles. But the way that I see it is like, why not just run a real business? Why not just focus on that? And I think Gail will probably agree with me right there as well. Vasil says, hello, hello to you too. And Ted says, manufacturing too. Yeah, manufacturing, again, real business, real brand, et cetera. That's what's winning right now. And I think that's only going to improve as AI content floods the internet and people are looking for something with more authority, with more trust, with more EAT signals, et cetera. That's why link building is so powerful right now. So we're going to keep going through some of these comments right here. So one question Siva had was about my link building outreach. And he basically said, do you have any email templates for negotiation emails I can try for link building? So if you actually check out, I'm going to go right here onto my website <coughs> and try not to cough down the microphone. You can check out my free link building mastery book on my website, juliangoldie.com. You can get that for free. And that has multiple outreach email templates inside it. So feel free to pick that up. That is probably 
the most tried and tested list of email templates I've ever created. And you can get it for free directly on my website. So feel free to check that out. And that'll probably help you a lot as well. SAP for topical map that is inside my free course right here. So I'm just going to hit save and then I can show you some examples. So if you scroll to the topical map section of my free course, I have two SAPs and tutorials and custom GPTs, etc., directly inside there. So feel free to get that. What else have we got here in terms of comments? Yeah, another question that we got from Allison was about, not really a question, but a comment was about how when it comes to link building, relationship building is the most important. And I would say that's absolutely true, right? So for example, if you if you look at backlinks and how they're built, it's all about relationships. I think that's the currency between websites because if someone has a relationship with you, if they know you and they know your name, this is why personal branding is so important. Well, then they're far more likely to link to you because they trust you, because they've heard of you, because they know you're an authority on your topic, right? So for example, if I reach out to some of the people that I met at the SEO Saigon Mastery Summit this week, and I met about 400 people there, well, I could reach out to them and say, hey, would you mind linking to this? Would you mind linking to that? I'm happy to link to you too, et cetera. And because we've built that relationship, it's just gonna land us more backlinks. So I think that's pretty much it in terms of questions and comments today. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to everyone who watched. If you want to get my free SEO course, links in the comments description. If you want to book in a free SEO strategy session with us, where we can show you exactly how to rank number one with SEO, how to get more leads, traffic, and sales from SEO, and also build you out a custom tailored game plan based on reverse engineering your competitors. Feel free to check that out. Link is in the comments description. Thanks to everyone who's watching. Great questions, especially from Find Media Tool. And appreciate the help from D Cooper as well. Shout out to you. Like you gave us some loads, loads of good tips inside there. Thanks to everyone watching. Amin says thanks. Thank you too. And Ted says TY, appreciate you watching as well. Thanks to everyone watching. Bye bye. See you on the next one.